blue. What's up? It's uh, 1227 on uh, the 20th, no, the 19th of July. Yeah, it's a Sunday. I'm about to meet up with some people and go to the San Francisco uh, Symphony concert in Dolores Park. I was once a classical uh, musician. I very much enjoy classical music. Um, so they're playing some classical music in Dolores Park, starting at 2. And then we are, my friend Vern and I, um, are going to like this three hour boat tour, a three hour tour. Um, no, like, it's part of Labor Fest, which is going on all this month in San Francisco, but um, it's like a three hour boat tour or something, and his brother, Gray Bretchen, is like this socialist and a PhD in a, a New Deal historian, a PhD at Berkeley. So he's giving the tour, it should be awesome. But uh, I've been doing some reading lately. Um, the, this vlog's gonna be about this book, and you know, I notice this is slightly off, and I'm sorry, I just don't feel like fixing it. It's called um, Guyland, The Perilous World Where Boys Become Men, Understanding the Critical Years Between 16 and 26. Very interesting, but um, also I just finished this book just this morning. It's Nature Made Him. Um, the boy who was raised as a girl. This I will do a whole separate vlog on. This really has inspired me to look at intersex issues because I am intersex. I have um, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. People have been asking about that. And also, I've been getting a lot of messages again lately about my chest. I got my chest done by Dr. Beverly Fisher in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, in December 2006. Double incision. I was a large B prior to starting testosterone. A small B or a large A after testosterone did its magic. Um, thought I was getting peri, but my chest was too large, so I got double incision. I think it's awesome. I have flex foil. That's no working out ever. It's not ST. It's been good to me. Um, and a revision in January of 2007. So a revision a year later. The scars go up a little more. Had a hematoma taken out and just had this, whatever. So Dr. Beverly Fisher in um, Baltimore, Maryland. Timonium is a suburb she's in. Ask me any questions about her. Whatever, this is my... I do not work out. I'm lucky. Um, but yeah, this book, I gotta, <laughs> gotta go back and pick through the names, the dates, the doctors and stuff and start researching some intersex stuff because I'm interested in... in um, I don't know, I just, yeah, I just want to know more. But this book, Guyland. Um, any guy, especially a white trans guy, and I say this because it, it, it's, it is about white, upper-middle-class culture, because he, he does address minorities, and he says, you know, they just don't deal with the same things that um, white guys do. And not to say that minorities shouldn't read it, because they can totally relate, because they do interview minorities about the same things about the white guys and they have totally different stances and I've been reading a lot of um, ethnographies lately comparing um, like lower income neighborhoods but comparing you know the racial uh, differences between white lower income youth and black lower income youth and it's very interesting but um, uh, it talks about Guyland as a stage of development instead of you know going to college graduating from college getting married you know, then starting to be provider, father, blah, blah. It's like they just continue this drinking all the time, hooking up, you know, whatever. So it's talked about this guy land as a new stage of um, development, adult adolescence, um, bros before hoes, the guy code, um, the rights of almost men, binge drinking, fraternity hazing, and the elephant walk. Um, sports crazy. I mean, I don't even want to read the chapter on sports because I don't give a shit about sports. But it was very interesting. and I'm Yeah, it was just great. Um, boys and their toys, Guyland's media, that was definitely great. Um, babes in Boyland pornography, hooking up, sex in Guyland, uh, predatory sex and party rape, and girls in Guyland, eyes on the guys, and then just guys. Girls in Guyland was especially interesting to me, and it kind of ties in with what I said something about how hard it is for me to date heterosexual women because of the expectations they have of me. Um, when I date a heterosexual woman, she first question is my sexuality because, or, or just assumes I'm gay right away. Um, or when they're first interested, they're like, oh, he can't, you know, be nice to me and sensitive and sweet and, um, he's straight. Um, just, it talks about how women have had to play with it. And I understand my past relationship with Kristen so much more now. Um, I understand heterosexual culture so much more now. I didn't experience it. 
uh, growing up, you know, I had to, like, convince straight girls that, you know, like, well, if I was a boy, would you like me? And then they'd be like, well, yeah. And then i get them to do whatever. But, um, if I had been a boy, I, it would have been much easier to date, and I would have been subject to that, so I would have turned out probably a lot differently, too. But, um, you know, I didn't know these rules. I didn't know how guys were, and, um, so it explains a lot. I could do a whole vlog on that, but please, you know, even though it doesn't really address the minority guys as much, because, as the psychologist says, it, they're just not affected by it, which is awesome, because, who the, this is the stupidest fucking shit ever, and yes, my phone's, that's my phone going off over and over. The joys of being Charles Asher, the phone never stops. Um, but this guy also, what I really like, I really got, I've been getting into masculinity studies lately because I start out reading women's studies and things about femininity and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, you know, people are coming out with books on like how hard it is to be a boy in America and all this stuff and it just sucks. You know, growing up male, you're not supposed to emote, you're not supposed to have emotions, you're not supposed to talk about how you feel. Fathers press you to be tough and take it like a man, never to cry and that makes you angry, that makes you not expressive later and um, my father never did that, even to my brother who grew up male, but... You know, I could do a whole video on my father and how he's affected me and my, my, my views of masculinity and stuff. And uh, so I think a lot of that comes from my father not just being transmasculine. But this is all over the place, but I want to just recommend this book, Guyland, by Michael Kimmel. And he's, what I was saying earlier, went off on a tangent, sorry. Michael Kimmel is very fair to women in this, and he does a lot of, um, he cites a lot of feminist work. Um, and, and kind of like, and when he does cite works on masculinity by men, it's often like calling them out like, you know, this is stupid, you're perpetuating the whole pe pe uh, patriarchy and just everything that, you know, we're trying to get away from. And, um, let's see if I can find this quote that I started out, um, oh yes, I knew that I would like him when I, you know, the introduction, um, he talks about the naming ceremony of his son, Zachary. He said, nine years ago at Zachary's naming ceremony, we each offered a wish for our newborn son. When it was my turn, I quoted the, po the poet, uh, Adrian Rich, who wrote, If I could have one wish for my own sons, it is that they should have the courage of women. I wish nothing more for Zachary that he would have Amy's courage, her integrity, and her passion. I hope for that still. I was like, this man, you know, wants his son to grow up to be courageous like his wife and have her passion and stuff. And that also leads me to another thing I want to vlog on about how... When it comes down to it, gender is so fluid, and what makes someone a good man or woman, it just kind of crosses over, and it's all the same thing. And, uh, that's another thing. So, sorry for putting all that out there, just want to recommend Guyland. Alright, take care, guys.